How messed up is college football right now? Well, a little bit. Uh, In fact, very severely. We've talked about that, you and I, a time or ten. But I uh, don't want to be the person who paints with a broad negative brush. We love the sport, as I have preached to you many times. Saturdays in the fall still feel the exact same. The old rush you get on third and two, fourth and one, tied up 17. They're on your opponent's 37-yard line. Game hangs in the balance. No one really cares about the transfer portal or NIL at that moment. So as long as it still feels the same, we still got college football. It's a long way from the sport going off the cliff by any stretch. However, that doesn't mean, if we love the sport, that we can't call things out for what they are. The college football calendar right now is garbage. The way that NIL and Portal are working together is not the way that they were intended, nor were they ever going to be that for anyone with half a brain on their shoulders. And so a lot of what we're getting was both unintended and easy to see coming, but we are where we are, okay? I'm not going to rehash that. We did a whole two or three segments on that over the past year, including one last week. Well, who cares what I think, right? I just wear the same two or three white t-shirts every week and talk in a microphone, but college football coaches have to live this stuff every day. Players have to live this every day. And so when they speak up about it, which is too rare for my taste, but when they speak up about it, and they make a whole heck of a lot of sense, we want to feature it on the show. So Chip Kelly and the UCLA Bruins were in a bowl game this week, and they won. Congratulations. And before that, Chip Kelly stepped to the microphone. And it's an interesting time of year because you still have a game to get ready for, but you also are reflecting, and you get asked some bigger picture questions. And so every coach is being asked right now, What do you think about the calendar? What do you think about the state of college football? And some of them are very guarded about it. Some of them are just wide open about it, but maybe they're younger or they cannot articulate how aggravated they are internally enough. But then you have other guys who have a ton on their resume and they've been around the block a time or two and they've seen the game in all different kind of iterations and they're smart. They're sharper than the decision makers themselves are, and they've forgotten more about football than the decision makers know. One of them is Chip Kelly. And so someone asked him, what do you think about the sport right now? I'm going to play you a couple of pieces of sound, and I want you to consider how wild it is that the entire college football world, known for being at each other's throats, came together over about two or two and a half minutes worth of Chip Kelly just sounding off on college football. Here's the first cut. What is the, the biggest issue that you might have right now, whether it be realignment, NIL, transfer portal, and what would your, your plan maybe be to, to try to solve it? I think they're all a problem, and I think we need to have a conference commissioner. I think football should be separate from the other sports. Just the fact that our school is leaving to go to the Big Ten in football, our, our softball team should be playing Arizona in softball. Our basketball team should be playing Arizona in basketball, but because football left. And they're saying, well, how do you do that? Well, Notre Dame's independent in football, and they're in a conference and everything else. I think we should all be independent in football. Okay, I'll just, I'll just say it because no one else wants to say it. Obviously, he's talking about me for commissioner. But aside from that, whoever the commissioner is, yeah, Like, that's one of the most duh moments in college football when you hear someone state it properly. How stupid is it that the University of Washington softball team is about to play in Pascataway, New Jersey in a conference game? It's ludicrous. But why? Washington football's doing it. So every every sport under the UW umbrella has to do it because we're all one athletic department. Well, if the term student athlete has been laughable for a while because it's, it's in the reverse order that it should be, athlete student is the order it's always been. and Well, it's always been in, in our lifetimes at least. If, if that has long since been figured out by everyone in the room, again with an IQ above room temperature, then it's not too big a stretch to start to ask ourselves, what about this whole model? Who says that UCLA football or Georgia football has to exist under the same university umbrella, under the same parameters that UCLA or Georgia soccer do, men's and women's. Who says that? Well, somebody somewhere. So we just go along with it. Now, I, meanwhile, have a sport at Penn State that turns about 99% of the revenue for the athletic department. But by all means, let's treat it the same as baseball. Let's not. Let's not. 
because we're not idiots. That's why. So that's the first thing Chip Kelly said. Then he went on to talk about a scheduling model and getting television networks and getting big money people, but also big brain people, to the same table and understanding the greater good of college football is really what should be served here instead of the greater good of a university or the greater good of a conference. No one thinks like that, of course, in college football because college football doesn't exist. College football doesn't exist. The sport exists. Saturdays in the fall exist. You and I love it. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the sport, but college football as an entity isn't a thing. National Football League is. National Basketball Association is. I know where their league offices are right now. I could fly up to New York City. Not interested in doing it tonight. But I could fly up there and I could go knock on the door and get security to drag me away. Where is college football? Where is it located? Where, where, where is the commissioner of this sport? Who runs this sport? Of course, those things don't exist. And so no one's looking out for the greater good of the sport. Chip Kelly's kind of hitting on that. But you know what he also talked about? He also talked about the key to, in my opinion, solving a ton of the issues that currently exist from your calendar to the inadequacy and inequity and NIL and transfer portal and how discombobulated that is to everything in between. And he did it with this soundbite. And I would do this, and I think this needs to be done. That money now needs to be shared with the student athletes and there needs to be revenue sharing and the players should get paid and you can get rid of NLI and the school should be paying the players because the players are what the product is. And the fact that they don't get paid is really the biggest travesty. Now, someone is going to come along and say, well, we can't do that now. We're talking about a lot of money there. We sure are, friends. We're talking about a ton of money. But I had stats and info run the number, so I didn't have to. I'm just going to throw a number out there, okay? I don't think in the revenue-sharing world every scholarship football player in a conference is going to make 50 grand a year. But let's just say they do. Because I think that is a very, very hardy number for a, for, for a left tackle at the University of, I don't know, Missouri to be making. So let's just say they do. Um, that's a lot of money to distribute around there. Yeah, it is. we can't afford to do that. The heck you can't. It's part of my language, of course. The heck you can't. Uh, I, I look and I say, what if 50 thousand dollars per scholarship football player was the revenue sharing number that we arrived at probably goes well above and beyond the value of most of those players the few superstar players notwithstanding most college football players themselves are not worth that much money per year in value I don't deny you guys work hard. I'm saying in your overall value you're not worth that much but hey let's give it to you anyway let's go 50 grand per year Josh that's a ton of money is it really? To you and I, it is. To you and I, that's a ton of money. Multiply it by 85. You don't have to. I did it for you. That's $4.25 million per team per year in payroll. That's half of what most of your coaches are making per year. You're telling me you can't afford to do that, especially if you reside in a conference like the SEC. Forget about the university. Let's just go every scholarship football player in the SEC. I got 16 schools down there starting this year. That would be $68 million to pay every scholarship football player in that conference 50 grand a year. The SEC just signed a new deal with ESPN where they get $300 million per year just in media rights dollars. You can't afford to do it. I'd argue you can't afford not to do it in the future because with that, inevitably comes employment and collective bargaining. And that scares a lot of people. And I understand if you just arrived from the past, if you teleported here from 2003, it's terrifying. It's where you are now. That's where you are. There's no going back. And it doesn't have to be dirty and disgusting and messy either, because when you get to that, at least it's structured. At least it's collectively bargained. And when you get to that world, you know what else it means? It means governance. And it means with the give, there is some take. And the take is your NIL as it currently exists is gone. NIL would still exist, but it wouldn't exist as the recruiting inducement it is now. When kids are getting paid that much money, your NIL would probably revert in many ways to what NIL is supposed to be, which is the folks whose names truly move the needle are going to get cereal endorsements and drink endorsements and car dealership endorsements. That'll exist, but that's what NIL is supposed to be anyway. What NIL is currently is illegal, but it doesn't matter because there's no one policing the thing. So leagues and, and in the future, perhaps a college football office. Also, if you enter into this kind of structure where we are giving you a cut 
of this television and media rights revenue. In return, because it's collectively bargained, they get to put that scholarship down on the table and say, when you sign this, there's new language on here. It's been collectively bargained. There's new language here. You're not going in the portal whenever you feel like it. You're not transferring out of here whenever you feel like it. Therefore, your position coach doesn't have to be recruiting his own position room in early November. That's not the way that a real operational sport in the classical sense is supposed to work. But college football works that way now because it's not operational and functional in the way it should be. I wish a lot of coaches would follow Chip Kelly's lead. And if, if not all of you feel equipped to do it, that's okay. Why don't more of you do what Chip Kelly did, man? Like every one of you have complaints behind the scenes. I don't talk to a single coach who says, boy, I love the way things are right now. If you don't talk, someone else is going to. I would argue the absence of real sharp football-minded people speaking up has probably in many ways contributed to getting us to where we are right now to begin with. Because if you don't fill that void, somebody of lesser intelligence and smaller intellect is going to. And sometimes those people love to hear themselves talk. And if, if there's a little power vacuum in the room, they'll be happy to fill it. You're the, you're the ones who have to actually work the schedule right now. Doesn't rub you the wrong way enough to speak up about it? What's going to happen? Is the commissioner of college football going to come down on you? Is the league office going to come down on you? Do you think Chip Kelly got in trouble for this? Chip Kelly, if anything, is getting pats on the back for that. And by the way, I don't know if you've recalibrated your thinking on this yet. You probably are still of the mentality that Chip Kelly, Pac-12 head coach, just spoke up. That is Big Ten head coach, Chip Kelly, in the future, you know, the starting next year. That is a Big Ten. So erase that logo behind his head there. That's a Big Ten logo. That's the multi-billion dollar question in the room, isn't it? Would the Big Ten ever go for something like that? Would the SEC ever go for something like that? If, if status quo is maintained, no, they don't have any reason to. The thinking for the past billion years in this sport up until present day has been self-interest. Now, the NFL doesn't operate like that, but the NFL was built from the inside out. There, there is nothing the owner of the Cleveland Browns gets to do of any substantial value that doesn't first have to pass through the filter of what's best for the National Football League. Conference commissioners do the opposite all the time. University ADs sometimes do it all the time. Coaches can do it all the time because we don't run things in this sport through a filter like that. And it is time that we did. So again, I would encourage, I know a lot of you listen. I appreciate you guys for doing it. Uh, Chip Kelly ought not be the last head coach who speaks out on this. He's not the first. Harbaugh spoke on it. Saban spoken on it. Like a lot of them have spoken on it. But Chip Kelly had his entire proposal. Chip Kelly was at a campaign rally. He laid out his entire platform. I know he's not the only one capable of doing that. And there's a reason why the entire college football media ecosystem over the span of 24 hours kind of galvanized around this. It's because everyone's been waiting for it. I mean, people who type for a living or talk for a living, man, folks like that, including me, I could talk all day. There's power when you do it. There's a whole lot more power when you do it than when someone like me does it because you actually live the life. I don't have to live with the consequences. If anything, I benefit from a lot of the mess right now because uh, there are also cracks in which there are opportunities to scale and build platforms like this. Now, that's not going to go away, but I'm not nearly as hurt by this stuff as you guys are. I, I don't run the risk of being fired because I can't build a roster because to do so ethically would put me 10 miles behind the eight ball because others aren't doing it. I don't run that risk. You do. So if you want a more sustainable future, if you want a more sustainable calendar, if you want some guardrails, if you want an idea that the rules of your game are going to be the same over a five-year period for once in your coaching lives, do what Chip Kelly did. Speak up and have an informed opinion when you open your mouth. Folks, listen. I promise you folks, listen. And contrary to popular belief, all of that matters. Nothing is etched in stone right now. We, uh, let me remind you guys, we don't even have a playoff signed off on two years from now. Do you realize that? Sure, we're going to 12 this year and next year. So, so those two years, people just keep thinking, are the starting point, and we'll work off that and build off of it. No, you won't. Not necessarily. There, there is a blank sheet of paper in the year 2026, I guess, and beyond, 
as to how the future of this sport looks. Nobody knows. It has to be agreed upon. I know that there may be one school of thought that indicates or, or suggests, oh, any kind of change like that would take years and years and years. Hey, what if this is the absolute best time to speak up because the years and years and years aren't even decided right now? No one knows the structure of this sport. Dude, if, if I asked you to bet your life, what conference is Florida State University in five years from now? Would you feel comfortable doing that? I wouldn't. Uh, Clemson, I wouldn't. Virginia Tech, I wouldn't. And so if I ask you the same thing in 2018 about Texas and Oklahoma, most of us would be dead because we would have bet our lives that they're not going anywhere. They're going to be in the Big 12. What are you talking about? What kind of question is that? And then all of a sudden they weren't. And so things unexpected happen all the time. None of this stuff is etched in stone. And the people, if there are things that tend to be etched in stone, the people that have the power to break the tablet are more than willing to if a better idea is presented to them. You just got to have the better ideas.